Welcome to Rolling Underground, where we talk about what's happening in the world above while in my grandparents' basement. I'm your host, Contact Trace. I've been I've been Contact Trace. Um, I I'm just gonna be honest. I'm not gonna name names. I'm just gonna say it's a family member that I live with, which is my grandmother. Anywho, I got tested yesterday. I don't think I have it. Uh, if I'm being totally honest with you guys, I'm straight up invincible. Like, I, I just can't be harmed in any way. <laughs> I mean, I, I've, I've avoided COVID a, a good number of times, especially in the past month or so. I mean, my girlfriend got COVID, one of my best friends got COVID. I straight up was at work having lunch with somebody, like face to face, and she got pulled like a couple hours later because she had COVID. She straight up said my name, I still worked, and I didn't have COVID. While I'm in my basement, just kind of going out of my mind, I was thinking about the age old question. The question, really, if you want to get down to it, what makes a perfect movie? What are the rules? Are there any rules? And let me tell you something, folks. There are. And I have created, if you will, a formula for the perfect movie. It's quotable, all right? Every great movie to be remembered for all of history needs to be quotable. You know, the only reason God, The Godfather is still in circulation is because of the classic, leave the guns, take the cannolis. All right, let's, let's be honest with ourselves, okay? That's really the only reason. It, it, the line needs to strike you in some certain way. Maybe it's an epic line. Maybe it's a scary line. Maybe it's just a downright hilarious line. You know, The Princess Bride is a very quotable movie and possibly the perfect movie. But it's really early in the video and obviously it's not gonna be that. The characters are relatable. The char I mean, why should we care about them if we can't have a connection with these characters? What's the point? I don't understand. You know, the character needs to be grounded in some sort. It doesn't matter if it's a sci-fi movie, it doesn't matter, like, animated movie about bears or some sort of animal, I don't know. At the end of the day, we need to relate with them in some sort of way. Because I'm definitely not saying they need to be perfect. They shouldn't be perfect. I, I think a perfect character is dumb and pointless. An imperfect character is somebody that we can root for. We all love an underdog, so just give us somebody that we can relate to. Don't make them overly stupid because that means that you think that we're stupid let's keep going soundtrack a soundtrack can make or break a film i swear all right and i'm not talking about like a playlist i'm talking it can also be a score you know a beautiful score can move you to pieces it can escalate a scene to a thousand degrees there's, there's just something about a score that really makes the movement of the character is more natural. It just, it, it makes more sense. You don't want a dry, bland scene with no music in the back. It's, it's, it's awkward. It's weird. It might even be a little too dramatic. I mean, I know some friends that straight up just listen to music scores. Like whenever they write, that's what they listen to. And then a playlist, you wanna talk about a playlist? Yeah, a playlist can help, all right? A playlist can show an audience a new, possibly new favorite song, all right? It can, it can reach maybe a nostalgic string, which we've talked about helps a lot. It can explain the setting of the characters. It, it can do anything. Camera work. All right, let's be honest. We're not gonna watch something that has shitty camera work, all right? I don't wanna watch something that's like overexposed or it's underexposed where I can't see a thing. You know, I, I want something that has nice shots, all right? I'm not saying that it has to be perfect camera work or groundbreaking camera work, but it's gotta be good camera work, all right? I don't wanna sit through an hour and a half movie looking at VHS tapes. You understand what I'm saying? You just you gotta put in some care, put in some thought. Maybe be a little inventive. And finally, a voice. A voice is quite possibly the most important thing you can have with creation. It should be one singular voice that goes throughout. I don't know how else to say it. You don't need the director, the DP, the, the gaffer, the producers, the main lead, and the writer all trying to put their voice 
into one thing, which I have seen. The director needs to be left to do their job. They were paid to do this job, okay? It doesn't matter how they misinterpret the script. It doesn't matter that it, the producers and them are arguing. They need to have their voice be shown in clear light. I, I really can't stress that enough. That it, multiple voices is just so confusing and just very, it's weird. And nobody likes it. Not once has it turned into a good product. And that's what I have to say about that. By the way, if you couldn't tell, I'm very tired and I'm wearing this dumb turtleneck for some reason because for, I, I don't know, I guess turtleneck means like critic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this thing off. Now with this formula, I wanna talk about something that you really don't need. Some of this, yes, it helps, but it might be good to not do these things. So I just wanna go down the list. First off, production value, all right? Everybody wants a big, budget of course they do you know they want to get paid really well honestly i think having a smaller budget can really help sometimes it forces an artist to be a little more creative it makes them think outside the box i mean originally there's that famous story of jaws steven spielberg wanted to use the shark more but the robot mechanical thing that they built bruce wasn't made for water so steven spielberg had to think around that and did a lot of more point of view shots where you didn't see the shark as much and it helped out the film so much. I know I've talked about this so many times with horror films and how it helps a lot not to have good budget, but honestly, there's a lot of good points in it. Another thing that's unnecessary is a star cast. Sure, it helps. And it really helps the marketing wise because you know people will be like, oh my gosh, it's that guy. Oh my gosh, it's that guy. Oh my gosh, it's that dude. This is such an amazing star-studded cast. You don't need that. That takes a lot of money out of the budget, which uh, if you're trying to go for a lower budget value, then that's just gonna take a lot of it. I think it's really smart to have a star or two in it, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the main character. You know, sometimes it's really good to take a chance on some unknown. Originally in Thor, nobody knew who the hell Chris Hemsworth or Tom Hiddleston are, and now they've made these unknowns a very well-known bunch. Just something to think on. You know, sometimes it's nice to experiment. Really what I'm saying is, you know, popularity doesn't equal good. And I think people get carried away with that. Another thing, it follows the hero's journey. You don't need it. I'm sorry, I'm so sick and tired of hearing the hero's journey. It, 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 it's tiresome. I don't care. You don't have to force a mentor in every single movie. It's stupid. Honestly, you know, sometimes all you need is, is a good sidekick or a good friend or whatever. Sometimes it's good for a character to learn things on their own, all right? They don't need somebody talking in their ear. Personally, I'm more of a fan of Dan Harmon's story circle. That's me. And even then, I try to not follow it as much as possible. Another thing uh, that is extremely unnecessary and honestly, you should probably look to avoid is a sex scene. I, I, it just makes me uncomfortable. I'm sure it's super uncomfortable to work on in the production. You know, people are naked, they have to be into it. I, it's, just, it's, it's a lot. And I literally, everyone has had this experience where you're watching a movie, there's been nothing so far, and then a sex scene comes up and your parents walk in. Or you're watching a sex scene and your kids are coming in. It's just, it's just awkward. And like, I understand sometimes you wanna, it's, it's just not for me. I think, <laughs> I don't know, I, it's, it's kind of a cliche quote that's been thrown around for decades, but it's from Quentin Tarantino. I know, you guys have heard about him a million times, but he, he speaks some truth. You don't have to know how to make a movie. If you truly love cinema with all your heart and with enough passion, you can't help but make a good movie. If you love the art of storytelling, you can't help but succumb to your idea. And I, I just kind of want to leave that note before I go into my perfect movie. I know you guys have been waiting for it for this entire segment, so let's just get into it. What is my perfect movie? Well, it's the 2006 masterpiece, Flush Away, with Hugh Jackman and a star-studded cast. I know it went a little bit against what my rules were, but come on. There's a lot of famous people in there. This is a really good movie. Uh, I watched this movie a lot as a kid, um, and it, it held on to me, all right? This is a very quotable movie, uh, especially Bill Nye's character, Whitey, who plays like lab experimental lab, I don't know. 
but he's hilarious. Oh my gosh, the comedic chops on him, phenomenal. Uh, there's this one line of, my bum's like a Japanese flag. Let me tell you, I did not hear that as a kid, but now I, as an adult, hearing that, that's hilarious. It's funny, I don't know. I don't know, these characters show depth and insecurity and you can relate with them, which I very much admire in, in this kid's movie. Even with Toad, the antagonist, yeah, but as crazy as he might appear, it's like his, his purpose has a true meaning behind it and it comes from a, a real place, it seems like, even though it's claymation. Uh, the soundtrack, phenomenal, all right? We got Billy Idol, we got Davy Jones, we got that one song that was super popular in the 2000s that went like, I'm so lonely, all on my own. Or it sounds like Gizmo from Gremlins. I, I think it's just fantastic. But mainly what makes this movie so extremely important that I've I mentioned before is that it has a voice. Its voice is so clear and tasteful and it doesn't waste any time with character design. You, know, you see the little bits of trash that they use with the characters. You see this and that. I, it's just, I don't know. They're just, it's very cool and edgy and very recommended. Also, clearly I'm joking. And I'd have to say the perfect movie is 